beloved YouTubers who died as legends. If heaven was hosting a party for legends, then these 10 YouTubers would all be invited. Supplying the vodka would definitely be Apatoa, who sadly predicted his own death just days before it happened. His what? final video was titled, I am not dead, I am 57 today, and it followed the same premise as all his other content. Apatoa would film himself almost always drinking spirits before going out to play in extremely cold conditions. Oh, wow. He'd mow his grass in the middle of a hailstorm, wash himself in bathtubs filled with with ice and wriggle like a worm in the snow. But on the subject of his death, the most important series had the label On Thin Ice. As the title might suggest, Apatow would ice skate on barely frozen lakes before always falling through to make it entertaining. The problem was, due to possible intoxication and having ice skates on his feet, Apatow often struggled to escape the freezing water and had no one there to help if things didn't go to plan. Oh, I'm uh, most time alone, 99 person. On the topic of safety, Apatow stated, Many regard falling through the ice as life-threatening, but if you know what you're doing and have ice claws, then it's usually fine. He yeah. further added with a smile, I shouldn't be cocky, I could very well die out here someday. Apatow's final video confirmed this hadn't happened yet, although just seven days later, his 25-year-long partner made a tragic Facebook post. Friday 26 November was a normal Friday. You went to a lake near Kongsberg, and you were looking forward to ice skating. You were supposed to film yourself and use it in a video. You sent me a message when you arrived with pictures of yourself and the water. Good conditions, you wrote. But something went terribly wrong. You ended up in the ice water, and this time you did not get up again, as you have done so many times before. Yeah. In the end, you were picked up by divers and sent by air ambulance to hospital. They did everything they could to bring you back to life, but you had been underwater for too long. Johannes and I were with you when the doctors at the hospital turn off all the machines that had kept your body going. Thank you for everything that you have been to Johannes and me. We have endless good memories and we miss you so indescribably. Abator will be remembered for living his life to the fullest, while Tommy Ale- That one will make you want to cry. Holy shit, what? I didn't expect that to be so fucking- Wow, okay, yeah, this is wow. Okay, Tommy. Evan will be remembered for the records that he broke. You see, Tommy had gotten brain cancer at the age of only 12, but dreamed of becoming a famous YouTuber whilst he was still healthy. After two months of uploading, Tommy had gained a measly 10 subscribers. However, the Facebook page Velociraptor and its 16 million followers were about to change Tommy's life forever. They'd post a photo of Tommy's channel with the caption, let's fulfill a dream. His name is Tommy, Unfortunately, he has brain cancer, but he has the hope of being known as a YouTuber. It is our time to make a child happy. Shall we help him? Here's Tommy's channel. Only three hours and 40 minutes later, a comment showed Tommy had gained 800,000 subscribers, grabbing the attention of Dross Rotzank, El Rubius OMG, or on Play and the Gref, who sent their combined 100 million subscribers to help with the young boy's nice. dream. Within only 10 days, Tommy had gone from 476 subscribers to 7.2 million, nice. which after growing to 10 million later that year, also meant he broke the following records. The most subscribers gained in an hour, the most subscribers gained in a day, the most subscribers gained in a week, the fastest channel to achieve 1 million subscribers, and the youngest creator to achieve both 1 and 10 million subscribers. Tommy was therefore also sent a diamond play button, although only his parents were there to see it come. Tommy had died just two months beforehand at the age of only 12, in the very same year we lost Laoshu 55,000. Moses McCormick taught himself to speak over 50 languages fluently, then talked wow. to random native speakers who were always extremely shocked. Oh, oh shit, I remember his videos. <laughs> <laughs> Better yet was when he switched to a second language. Oh, I don't think I'm one one, huh? I think I'm one Or when he spoke an unusual language that wasn't quite so common. You Germany? I'm Hungarian. Oh, Hungarian. See ya, see ya, hold on. Wow. These videos helped Moses to gain a million subs. However, in May 2020, Laoshu's brother Mark, who often appeared in the videos, uploaded his own video titled, Warning video to Laoshu family, friends, and fans, Moses is not safe. In the video, Mark explained that Laoshu had begun a new relationship with a girl who he believed was acting very strangely. I don't know this girl, and she came out of nowhere. 
that she's an ex-federal agent. The video was especially concerning after this was also said. We have to pray for Moses right now. He is not well. She actually has been manipulating him and huh? he is not well. He's not well. And while this could have been dismissed as an overprotective brother, Lao Shu died unexpectedly only nine months later. The cause of death was supposedly a heart attack, yet Lao Shu's brother didn't buy it for a second. What? What? No. But why? But why? Hey man, I'm not really, I'm not really big on the theories, bro. I'm not really like a theory kind of guy. But like, I feel like a lot of times when people pass away by unexpected things, like, and it seems like there's a theory behind it, it tends to be always in heart issue. That's, that's one thing I always look at. And I'm like, that's weird. That that's very strange. And it would be a damn lie to tell the world that he died of a heart attack. He'd upload a new video believing Lao Shu was murdered by his girlfriend. But in why? 2020, I shared my concern regarding being associated with that new girl that nobody knew. Also starting an online fundraiser which read, My brother didn't have any chronic illness and never complained to me about heart issues. When I seen the condition of his body, I immediately knew he was killed. Yet Lao Shu's girlfriend responded to the claims by calling them baseless conspiracy theories. So exactly what happened is for your own conclusion, but the assassination of Christina Grimmy is much more cut and dry. Christina began on YouTube by covering popular songs, and only two years after starting, Selena Gomez hired her. Christina's popularity exploded after- Federal agent girl plus heart attack? He knew shit he wasn't supposed to know. You think- I mean, shit. You think so? Like, you think- he just learned too much and the government fucking sends him a fake girlfriend? Like some American assassin type shit? Like, I'm a, like, like some American assassin type shit? Sends him a fake girlfriend. Hey man. Hey man. Like, fuck. When you think about it, you're like, bro, it's hard to think that deep and be like, could it be possible? But can you put anything past people? Can you? placing third on The Voice, giving her the audience to play live in concert, where the unthinkable tragically happened. Oh, on the 10th of June 2016, Christina posted a tweet reading Orlando, come out to the show tonight at the Plaza Live starts at 7.30, also attaching the following video. Hey guys, what's up? Um, we're in Orlando today, please come to the show if you live near Orlando, Florida. And as shown by the concert's footage, it went extremely normally. You guys are awesome! However, after the show concluded, Christina held a meet and greet where just minutes after taking these fan photos, Kevin James Lubel walked up and fatally shot Christina. She's since been remembered as a beautiful person and an amazing Wait, singer, a beautiful soul with an amazing voice, and an incredible talent that won't be forgotten, similar to Rich Piana, who what? also inspired millions. The bodybuilding YouTuber had been using PED since a very early age. I've been taking steroids since I was 18. I'm 43, so what is that, 20, 25 years? Accepting the side effects by stating, I am total 100% aware that damage is being done to my body in the choices I am making. I know for a fact that doing what I'm doing is going to cause damage, but I have made a choice and I'm willing to deal with that. I'm willing to roll the dice and that's something you have to be willing to do. In 2014, at the age of 43, Rich Piana said this, I have to say, honestly, I've had no side effects. Although only three years after claiming that he'd had zero side effects, yeah. The following video surfaced showing his poor state of health. Maybe this is not normal. I know. I've seen stuff like this before. I'm afraid. Oh my god, nigga. This is fucking. Like, for what? At this point, like, I. Honestly, why, though? Right? Like. Why? Like, just for your physique, bruh? Like, you're willing to deal with that just for your, like, just for your physique is... <sighs> His poor state of health. Maybe this is not normal, I know. I've seen stuff like this before, I'm afraid. 
thing, but more than just a physique to him, bro. This is who he is. This is his life, bro. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's Without this, he thinks he has nothing. getting a haircut later that year, Rich Piana unexpectedly collapsed before falling into a coma and dying two weeks later. His autopsy showed his heart and liver weighed twice the average size, with the following comments summarizing his legacy perfectly. I respected that guy. He at least didn't hide nothing about what he used. Showed folks how not to do it. R.I.P. Mr. Piana. Although, sadly, Claire Wineland's state of health was a little less voluntary. In fact, Claire Claire Wineland began on YouTube by talking about her health. I have something called cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic disease, meaning you're born with it. As you get older, it gets worse. I've nearly died six times. And despite being born with cystic fibrosis, it became substantially worse from the second she started uploading. Over the past six months or so, my health has declined dramatically. Just took a Freaking plummet. Two months later, Claire explained that things had gotten worse again. You know, like, I, I couldn't work. I've never felt more embarrassed in my entire life. And while a viral GoFundMe had made a massive difference... That we got to $200,000 with $10 donations is just... It's just mind-boggling to me. That's I don't awesome. even... This turned out to be That's her awesome. final video alive. Just oh. three weeks after receiving her donations, Claire was given a lung transplant that caused her to suffer a stroke. She died in September 2018 at the age of 21. I'm hoping we get past 21. Like, I just wanna... I just wanna go clubbing once. At the same time, Etika was also trying to Man. win a smile. He'd built a cult fan base called the Joy-Con Boys. However, after 10 years of content creation, they began to notice that Etika was acting a whole lot stranger. Senzo Bean, Dragon Balls, all those things exist. Every dead person that died, they'll come back and they'll realize they're God and they'll feel like they're Goku. As a result, Etika was placed in a mental hospital and despite confirming his release by posting I am free, he had more problems just around the corner. Police returned to Etika's house after some more concerning tweets, which he'd live streamed to the public for roughly 40 minutes. If you break into my apartment, you will be breaking the law, officer. Do not step foot into my apartment. You do not have permission. Now leave the premises before Shit, I call bro. my lawyer and have him sue you. Two months later, he'd post a new video titled, I'm like sorry. We're like witnessing his breakdown, which is like, ah. But I, I, I wonder what the turning point is. I was like, this is when I was kind of like starting YouTube. I remember when that was happening. I was like, when this happened, I was like, Shit. Sorry. I'm sorry I betrayed your trust. I'm sorry Shit. I pushed you all away. I'm sorry I made a clown of myself. After which his phone and bag were found abandoned on the ground. Police then found Etika's body roughly five days later, but at least Bernard Alberts. What was the turning point for that? Like, if I don't know, it just felt random. It felt like he was doing well, and then it. He just wasn't. Like, that's how it seemed. I, I don't know. Since life had a much more wholesome ending. Bernard didn't begin on YouTube until the age of 72, but had lived such a jam-packed life, his stories were instantly welcomed. On the 8th of November 2013, he'd post the incredibly viral An Old Man's Advice video, inspiring his audience with a couple words of wisdom. You can do anything that you want to do. Don't say the world is just against me. That's not true. Fun fact, no one searched for this, but we all need it. Right. He'd therefore post another installment video. with the opposite philosophy to most boomers. Young people, without you, this world is nothing. You are the backbone of this world. Before uploading a series of Bible teachings, one of which from April 2019 discussing Armageddon and the end times. Well, as the top comment read, may you rest in peace, it turns out this video was the end for Bernard himself, who died in October 2019 just before his 81st birthday. The channel remains active with content posted by life. his son, while more Good tragically, life, yeah. Technoblade's channel is still active with content posted by his dad. Technoblade was gaining roughly 20 million views per video when after a three month break, he'd make an unexpected announcement. So in the last few days of July, I noticed that my right arm was starting to hurt a decent amount and headed over to the doctor to see what was wrong. And the reason my arm hurts is because I have cancer. Techno spent the video joking like it wasn't all that serious. Of all the phone calls I've made, nobody took the news worse 
than my health insurance provider. They've been inconsolable for weeks. They were like, you got what? Having full confidence that things would turn out fine. I just want to clarify that the doctors I have are like insanely good, bro. I'm going to be getting some of the finest health care in the world, so don't worry about me too much. It had seemingly gotten more serious with the upload. I almost became an amputee, yet Techno actually explained in the video that he was almost back to normal. I now have 99.9% .9 less cancer than I used to, which is pretty great. Uh, nice. world of difference between that at 100%, but so far everything is going according to plan. It seemed his condition was only getting better. So my arm has gotten a lot better. I can raise my elbow up to like my chin and my arm up to my forehead. However, only three months afterwards, it was confirmed by his dad that Technoblade had passed. Despite talking about the cancer in his arm, Techno didn't mention that it spread across his lungs, taking his life and devastating a fan base like the death of Joe Linna. He was oh, often referred man. to as the legendary Joe Stetics, initially going viral for a muscle movement known as Alien Gains. However, Joe explained that it came from rippling muscle disease, and it was actually difficult to live with. By the way, it hurts so much, bro. It hurts like crazy. Further adding on Bradley Martin's podcast, it affected his vital organs. But, but there's nothing bad to the disease, no? Let's be honest, the muscle is also, uh, the heart is also a muscle. Yeah. And that's oh, my biggest concern that's always. Scary. What if I have such a bad cramp that my heart gets a cramp? It's I don't called know. a heart attack. The conversation then flowed toward bodybuilding deaths. The fitness in industry in general, a lot of people are kind of, you know, going out. Yet neither Brad or Joe could have ever guessed that only 23 days later, Joe would oh, meet wow. a similar fate. His girlfriend announced his death via Instagram, the cause of which being a brain aneurysm, remembering her partner with a pretty accurate description. An amazing and incredible person in this world. That was sad, but had a good closure to it. I'll give you that. Sad, but had a good closure to it. Sunny V2 videos always end in like a, like a, hey man, people pass, but it'll be okay type of way.